In the last video, we ended at the sign-in API resulting in um, the access token and refresh tokens, uh, which are attached to cookies um, on the front end. So let's see what happens after this. So we have the front end and we have the, the back end API layer and the core, um, the super tokens core. Now, um, the front end calls the sign in API um, and this calls the core to verify the, the credentials. This returns the access token plus refresh token and this sets the access token and refresh token in cookies. So now the browser has, has stored the access token and refresh token um, on the front end. Now, when I make um, an API, when the front end makes an API call to, to your application, uh, your, your back end, say for example, slash like comment, um, at this point, um, the browser will attach the access token to uh, the request automatically, um, since this is saved as a cookie attached to the API domain. Um, in this API, the first thing you will want to do is verify the session. So in our backend SDK, um, so for example, in the node SDK, we have a verify session function, which gets called, which you can call. This will verify the incoming access token um, in a stateless way. So uh, this is a signed cookie and this will verify it um, using the public key that was used to sign this. And uh, if verification is successful, it will produce a session object, uh, which you can use in your API to, for example, get user ID or get access token payload. Um, you can even modify the access token payload. So there's an update access token payload function and so on. Um, and if you want, you can even revoke the session. So uh, the session object provides a, a set of helper functions to get information and manipulate the session. Um, and then, you know, you can reply with a 200 to the front end. Now, in case the verification of the session fails, and that can happen because maybe the access token has expired, um, this will, uh, instead of creating a session object, it will send a 401 to the front end. Um, now the front end at this point um, will use uh, the refresh token um, to call, well, the slash auth slash session slash refresh API, which is one of the APIs exposed by the backend middleware. Um, this API will uh, take the refresh token, which is again a cookie, um, and call the core with the refresh token. The core will then uh, verify the refresh token uh, if the verification checks out, um, the, it will generate a new access token and a new refresh token. So access token one plus refresh token one. Um, and, and these are different tokens than, than these. And the front end will again send these as cookies. So access token one plus refresh token one. Um, and then, um, this API will be called again, uh, but this time with access token one. Um, and then, you know, this time this, this verification will succeed and you can run your logic and return a 200. So uh, the process of refreshing, so from the point of getting a 401 to calling this API and then calling this your original like comment API again, that happens automatically. 
and that is what our front-end SDK does. Um, so we have this for uh, React, Vanilla JS, and React Native um, at the moment. So you do not have to worry about refreshing the, the session automatically. That's something that happens um, uh, you know, transparently. From your point of view, all you are doing is calling the sign-in API, uh, and then calling the like comment API using Axios or Fetch, uh, verifying the session using uh, a function on the backend, and going about uh, your API logic. Um, the refreshing of the session, uh, attaching the cookies, uh, all of that happens automatically. Thanks.